hello and welcome to today's video. Today we are here playing Minecraft once again for you guys in the middle of our month of December recap adventure. We of course still have time for gaming. So today, to start off a brand new week, which technically wasn't this video actually, it's the video that we did of our recap yesterday. But to start off a brand new week, which we can start on the channel on uh, Monday. We are here in Minecraft, and of course we're going to give you guys another look at our creative world here that the meme and I uh, spend a lot of time building it. But first, you guys not have checked out our recap video of 2019, you might as well want to check that out because it's a Minecraft video, we put it up yesterday. So go ahead and check that out, if you have not already. Today though, we begin on what is called the battle block. This here is a area that Lamim has built uh, to replace our fight zone which is down there. That's the fight zone. This here has replaced the fight zone. Uh, we had some issues with Lamim and I did there and I kind of said nah, I'm done fighting you here. So <laughs> we're not going to have to go on that. We don't need to have that kind of brought up into a video but it wasn't that big of a deal ultimately. Uh, but he wanted to build a gigantic block out of nether rock. We spent a lot of time collecting nether rock and all that stuff for this build. Which he didn't tell me until I collected up my entire inventory's worth of nether rock for him. And he's like, oh, I guess I can tell you now. This is another themed uh, fight area. We haven't fought on it yet. We didn't get uh, an opportunity with some issues to go down, which we'll get to in a little bit. Um that sort of prevented this area from being completely ready but as you can tell there's a lot of stuff up here he wanted another theme but I said I'm building something here as well so uh, this is what I built this is a little house nothing really to it I don't really know what's happening with the stairs but either way um, building here kind of cool got some potatoes because I always grow potatoes in this um, we got some and fruit, not what it's called, coarse fruit, that's popping off, and an Acadia tree just for the hell of it, half snow, half rain up here, so it's kind of fun, another portal that takes you into the nether, and then back to near my house actually, in here, very much a nether themed thing, a cave down here, a little bit of lava that way, and ultimately, I believe this just hangs off the edge. Very, very scary, though. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, we will actually go over the rules for this area that we have in place. And uh, I'll show you our rule book in a minute. Uh, once I get back to the area. But, yeah. Kind of cool. Some fire, some other wart. Really going to be a fun area to fight when we eventually do get to. I'll uh, jump into the other part of the detail up here. Another, which then brings us to our another exit, which should be by my house. And it is so. That is very cool. We have our whole pathway set up here. Um, now, in the time that he was building that, I did expand on the top of my tower. Uh, it now does reach the build limit. Uh, my tower up there has been expanded. What the hell happened to it? Oh, fuck's sake. Has been expanded on either way. Uh, we did have a little bit of a fire, so the ranch got destroyed on this end, but the G-Wagon Hotel is back 100% along with this other stuff. Now, for good measure in this area, I don't know if I did show off this structure, so I will in a minute. Um, we did show off in the last episode, though, the Meadows, Meadows Park, which Lemian built, which is very cool. Uh, which you can see over there, great view of it, actually, from this area. And again, the big block that he built is up there. 
Uh, we can head up into this, though. Which is a great little uh, lookout tower observation place. Really, it's the only point. Be a unique little structure and give us a place to look out on some of the, uh, some of the scenery? Scenery. God damn it. <laughs> uh, the scenery. In the area. Right. Next, we head to... Just, like, two really awesome things to show off. I'm sure one of you can see. Clearly. But I kind of want to save that for the end. Oh, we got two things up here on the hill. Um, one, this building does have my animals in it, which I will get to why it does. We got everybody in here. Inchon, Hangul, Alex, Busan, Max, Jeju, Susan, and Park. All in here for a reason. Also over here we have the oak and the hay next to TNT, because it's okay, Boomer. Uh, we also have a big thing here that says Red Bull on it. Because that looks cool. I drink Red Bull. Uh, so yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty fun to build this. Didn't really have another use up here. I don't want to put a building next to this. I figured. Let's put Red Bull up here. It looks kind of cool. Because I wanted to write Red Bull somewhere. Uh, it's hard to do a whole big logo. It's going to take up a lot of space. But we're going to write out Red Bull in a Red Bull. Uh, yeah. Back to this meme real quick. I like the Oak Hay Boomer. Yeah. Uh, I believe something happened like damn fucking tower. Oh my god. Okay, so... Here's the thing. There's been some changes in this area, which I'm sure you can tell. I just really don't want to show them off quite yet. I want to get to... The smaller things before we check off the two big additions. Oh my god, I'm getting fucking pounded by these dudes. Please, nobody clip that and do what you want with that, but. Um, over here, I have built something that is genius. So this is a little. Well, I mean, it looks like a hill. Let's be honest here pretty well made. Go inside here. Yes. Redstone. And then you're into this room, which is like, cool, I'm in a room. What is the whole purpose? I'm supposed to be hidden, so nobody's supposed to know it's here anyways. And then, a little trap door opens, which you then drop down into. And you have a secret little hideaway in the earth. Oh god, I don't want to sleep in this. No, I set my spawn location here. Fuck. Um, yeah. That's the whole point, though. Are you fucking kidding me? I have a solution for this. Wait. How the fuck do I get out now? Well, I kinda have an idea. Guess I'm potentially a way out. I gotta bring something down here though to make this easier. I don't have to tear up the damn floor to get out. Kinda ruins purpose putting ender pearls here. So, as you can tell, work in progress. To finally uh, finalize that, but overall, a cool concept. Now, I didn't intend to sleep in this episode, but since I uh, messed up, kind of have to. I just didn't want to go into my house, have you see all my deck changes, but get your 
see me now. Um, again, I want to give you guys an in-depth look at this in a minute or two, but... Not yet. You have to go... Look at one other thing over here. Go into Lamim's house, show off his dank additions. So we got a bunch of cool stuff that we worked on in the past week. I'm so proud of our like really, really dank additions. Um, for sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, now, uh, real quick on that bunker thing because I didn't really get to show off as much as I hoped. Or talk about as much as I have when I was in it. Uh, basically, it's just supposed to be like a little place you go hide out, no one knows you're in there. That's really it. I just gotta add a little bit more to the interior of it, but I didn't get the opportunity to today, but I just wanted to show it off in the video. Nonetheless. Because I want to show off everything that I've done, or we've done up to the point, because if not, it makes it kind of a mess. So, this here. It's supposed to be like a little camp that Liam set up. It's sort of like a Native American camp, almost, you could think of it as. I don't know that's really the thing he was going for, but it's kind of the vibe I got when we talked about it, at least. Uh, so it's cool. It's a little uh, thing with a couple little tents set up. A couple little fires. I don't know if he has a hay underneath it to go higher, but... Um, a couple little fires set up around here. Which is a campfire that's been put out. That looks kind of cool. There's some of the grass area that's sort of been made into a walkway. And then it's sort of like a wool main tent area. Uh, I think it looks really cool though. Um, one of the other... <coughs> yeah. Great additions to our map, to say the least. So, we're kind of working on expanding out this way a little bit, as you can tell. Uh, but yeah, that is cool. Shut off this before my lake that I built. I'm proud of that. Uh, but now, we head to one of the big ones. There's two big things we updated in this, and both of them have to do with our houses. Both of them made significant upgrades to our structures, or living areas. Um, and we're gonna start with the memes because, well, it's my video. So we'll start with his first and then we'll go to my house last. Uh, so what he's done here is a really, really cool redstone door. Now this here took a couple hours for him to really get worked out. Then he put a big thing here with water that's supposed to like, water's supposed to go into the stairs, I guess, the way that it works, and then act as a defense against explosions. So we put a TNT block in it, he told me to shoot it, and I did, and it exploded and messed up the entire contraption, because the TNT went down into there and messed up his redstone wiring. So he had to rebuild it, and it took a couple hours to do that. But ultimately what he got was a cool 3x3 door, because what made it complicated was the door here, the three sticky pistons, and the three sticky pistons here I had to pull. Then, it had to pull up, pull this down, and I believe the bottom one, this block, it gets pulled over, and then pulls this down. I believe it's down, not up. Um, yeah. Because the sticky piston door, a door with a sticky piston with just the two pieces, is easy enough to make, but when it's three tall and three across, it's a lot harder. So a three by three is a lot harder than a three by two or a two by two, uh, like I built before, or even four by two, whatever. Anything by two is easier than anything by three. So let's show off how it works here. As you can tell, like I said, it pulls this over. <coughs> I apologize, I got a lot of uh, phlegm and things, and you'll see why in a video coming up later in the week on Thursday, another recap of 2019. Uh, you'll see in that why. That I may have a little more stuffed up. All that video was recorded right before this one. 
Uh, yeah, so this here is really something that I think is cool because this pulls over, this pulls over, this gets pulled up. Then this goes down, there's another piston that pulls over that block and then pulls this, or the piston, the stick piston goes back up and pulls that. Very cool, very complex. Again, I mentioned in a video earlier in the week, or on Sunday, our 2019 recap about Minecraft being like a surprise game of the year for me to play. And I really discussed how a lot of things that Lamine builds just impressed me so much, and this is one of those, and I just really wanted to put a lot of appreciation into this door. I know he wanted me to talk about it. Uh, he mentioned, he's like, oh, you should, you know, I want to have the door on those in the video. And I really just, I think it's so cool what he did with this door. One of the really cool things, one of the many cool features of his house. There's many, and this is just one of them. And even with these blocks here, the, uh, whatever, I forgot what they're called. He has the glowstone in it, though. Even with that, just lighting up when you press the button. Obviously, I with redstone. It's so cool to have that little detail. And again, the block of coal in the middle, making it more unique. I love it. So. In his house. We now have a room here. This is my room. He built it for me. In his house. It kind of mirrors his bedroom, which you looked at in a previous video. But yeah, there's stuff in here sort of that I can use, and he said I can do whatever I want with it. I haven't really messed with it, but I really just like the way he built it. Honestly, I don't really want to touch it. Uh, but it is cool to have a room in his house. And I appreciate that he built that in there for me. So basically, in the last video, if you may remember, we showed off this room here that he built. Uh, we kind of came into here and said, oh, there's a new building or a new part of his house. Here it is, and we went down these stairs. And we went down further, and there was a big basement. Oh my god, there's a fucking creeper. Oh my god, did they blow up? They did not good. Oh, for fuck's sake. Holy shit. <laughs> um, yeah, so it went down and there was like a thing here with an elevator. Uh, and it was supposed to be like a walkway out. We showed that off a little bit. This is sort of like where that contraption was. But he built these stairs down and built this room for me. Because I'm like, oh, I in my old house design I had a room for him. And I'm like, oh, you should build a house or a little room that I can use in your house. So we both have those. I built a nice one for him, a really cool one, which I'll show you later on. Uh, but yeah, he had a purpose for this room. He put some of these uh, books in here for his enchantment stuff, which we'll get to why they're in here in a minute. Um, but yeah, that's a really cool one. I just love how it goes down, down. Really uh, cool with that. Now, before we continue with the rest of his house, we have a special connection to show you here. So, if you may remember in a previous video that I made, I talked about having an area that was for getting up to my uh, tower. My, uh, not tower, my map room. So initially I built this path down here myself to connect from this here, which is one of my towers, into my house, which is up here. Also a good place to store our duplicated machine where you can diamonds, emeralds, gold, silver, coal, wheat, all that stuff we can do down here. Good place to keep it hidden. Eventually I made a map room, extended it, and built a big hallway. But Lamine thought, I mean I had thought of myself but didn't bring it up. So he brought it up. We should connect our houses. Turns out the level here that he dug down to was very, very close to the pathway. We can have to dissect, okay, we gotta make it match in this portion. Because he wanted to do like a cave thing, and I'm like, eh, I'll do a little different. So here it is a connection between our house 
which goes all the way to the bedroom area that I designed for him into his entire house. The whole way we can go without going um, outside. So if there's phantoms, things that are annoying, enemies, I mean, we just tried, there's still creepers, but a lot of things not to worry about as much, ultimately. Uh, so, cool pathway. We will show you what's at the other end of this tunnel later on. But for now, we must continue in Lamim's house. Now, one thing that was noticed about this house was it was kind of annoying to come in from this door and then get to have to do this. Walk all the way up here, around like this, Look at how Jack the Sunset looks over all of our stuff. That's awesome. Come up. Go this way. Come in through here. Go down these stairs. Into here. Because essentially he made that doorway. With, you know, it leads sort of to our underground tunnel. Leads to my room. No real flow between the rest of his house and that side. It was kind of cut off by the hill. So, right here, he had his enchantment room, which is really, really dank. I like the way that it looked. Um, but I think what he's done here is really awesome as well. I love the way the enchantment room, though, had the uh, uh, the underwater, the sea lamps, whatever the hell they're called, uh, in the ceiling. It looked really cool. But ultimately what he did was sort of rearrange this area. Put some of his like food stuff over here. Move his cooking things here. This is for uh, turning stone into uh, the polished stone. So basically you can put cobblestone, cooks it up, drops it into here when it's done and then makes it into polished stone. Also this one here does something else. I forgot what he said this one does. But it's some sort of food looking thing I'm assuming. Bunch of furnaces. It's a great walkway though to take you right from this dank door into here. Also, I got a little mailbox. We let to have mailboxes to store items for each other. He can throw whatever he wants for me in here. Whatever he wants to give me can go into that box and I will check it. This right here is his mailbox, uh, which I mentioned before how it's got a really cool connection from outside to the inside. So that is why now in his house, this room up here so it became a book room. And I think it's a really great use of this room. It really sort of fits a book room theme. Now, before we go over there and look at the stuff that's in my area, I want to show you one other thing. I talked about the block and how up there in our, uh, I was going to call it sky block, our fight block, there's a couple of rules. Lamim took his time the other day to write a book. <laughs> um, the rule book. <laughs> so the rules are kind of oh I should also mention he's gonna build something behind here but not yet that's why I sort of covered it um yeah so we kind of thought in our first fight zone there wasn't really rules it was kind of like some things we kind of went by but we have a book with everything written in it from when our fights take place so Battle block rules. Now, he did call it Battle Planet, and I told him that kind of sounded like a place where little kids have pizza parties, so we changed it to Battle Block. So, 1v1 battles only. Obviously, it's only the two of us, but still. Each player brings their own items to fight. Players must kill in the battle zone. This rule means players are forced to fight the battle block. No fight, barrier, kills valid, only if opponent on the block. So basically, a fight doesn't count unless you're battling on the block. Next up, building rules. You can't use TNT. Uh, he put a lot of work into making that. Um, and we both put a lot of time into getting the nether rock. Makes sense not to have a uh, thing of TNT used up there. Um, also, water buckets can be used. I'm assuming this to put out the fires. I'm assuming that's why he has that rule in there. Now that I noticed it. I just figured we don't want to push each other off the thing with the water, but that makes sense as well. Uh, yeah, initially the one of the rules is the one that I sort of decided 
uh, to have changed. He said you can use TNT, but you have to have a certain rule, and we can challenge them. Like, let's just not use TNT. Uh, I don't really see. I mean, I think that there could be a benefit. You can strategically use it, but it's going to be more of a mess if we destroy that whole area. Because we want it to be an area to fight, but also an area that looks nice at the same time. Not like the other area where it just became a massive hole. Uh, specific rules. Mob kills count as a kill if the player's already inflicted damage. Uh, fights are only valid if both fighters agree. The safe zone is the only safe spot. Or we're heading to only safe spot spot you are protected from hits. Totems of undying are allowed. So I guess you can go in the safe zone and be safe from taking damage. I don't really know where the safe zone is up there. He hasn't completely finished it yet, but I guess we'll see with that. Um, again, the fights are only valid if both fighters agree. That's the thing that we did have from the previous area. I felt like it was important for more on the ground than necessarily up in the sky because we kind of go up there with intent. Where in the other, you could be walking through, you could just be there building something if you want. I really felt like it's important for us to agree, hey, we're going to fight instead of saying, oh, I killed you, that's the point. And again, the thing with mob kills, I wanted that to be in there that it only counts if you're already taking damage. Because I just felt like, because I got blasted off by a creeper when I went up there to look around. I feel like if you just get killed by an enemy, it shouldn't count as a point for you. Um, it counts if you take damage. It's kind of like, you know, when you play in GTA, right? If you're with somebody and the police show up and they kill you, it doesn't count as a kill for the person you're with unless they've done damage to you. It's the same type of idea, I feel. Uh, knockout rules. If you're knocked out, you can come back to the battle block within one day, uh, one Minecraft day, apply to the start of the fight. So basically, if you get knocked off the block by the other person, which is a rule that I think he will maybe have to use more than me. I have a knockback sword, which knocks people back pretty far. There's a good chance he'll get knocked off the edge. It gives him one day to come back onto the block. There's no show. So basically, if you don't show up within that one day, um, basically you got 20 minutes to get back on the top. If you survive. I mean, it's pretty far down. If you fall down without landing in water, or use some sort of form to stay at the, stay alive at the bottom, you're going to die. But if you live somehow, you have... One Minecraft day, or approximately 12, 50 minutes to get back to the top. Sportsmanship basically just says kick them while they're down. The battle block is hard to get back on. It's not a fair move, but you can still stop the opponent. Most likely, the way you're going to be able to get back on the sky block is by going up that scaffolding that I showed you. Uh, I didn't show you, but I went up myself to get onto it initially. Uh, it's going to be almost impossible to get back onto it with that. Maybe you can fly with the elytra, but I don't have an elytra, so that would be something he would use. Not me. Then we both signed it. I signed the goat, redstone expert, Minecraft god. Those are the things we typed in, and I wrote this here. Uh, our page with the score on it. So, that is that. The rules for the block. Now, though... We head to something else. Something down. Something new. But we still have one more thing to look at before we go to the brand new thing that I've designed. First, we head this way. And this goes to Lamim's house. I showed you, of course, an area that I des he designed for me in his house. So I designed this for him in my structure. Here it is, a house for him. Very similar accommodations to what he has. A mailbox here where I can drop things for him. And your chest as usual. A chest here. Lecterns, some of the stuff. Flags, we each have flags in our rooms. Um, yeah, overall, this is what I designed for him in my space and what I did for him because he's a big uh, user of the trident. Mine has loyalty and that, but he has channeling, which means he can use the water to sort of fly around. If it's raining, he flies everywhere. But in this here, you can jump up out of it. So I figured put it here in the area for the turtles. 
and he also likes turtles, so this might be cool. He likes the turtles in this game, at least. Um, so now, we head to the big one, though. My house. It's been... Why the fuck is this like this? I'm glad that that got changed. Fucking appreciate that. What a fucking absolute massive idiot. Call my damn carpet. Um, so this here is the house that I built. Uh, this here was the area of the original structure. I've taken and completely expanded it over to here, and we'll go through the entire thing. Now, as we obviously have expanded, it took a little bit of redesigning. I've swapped the animals and the um, watermelons, um, moving them, sort of condensing the animal area. Only have one cow now. That's a shame. Um, sort of condensing these areas, though, making them a little bit smaller, but still functional with the animals, and also an area where the watermelons are still growable and chop downable to put here into my then to ultimately get bone meal. I moved the grave of my bird from the other side to here. Still want to honor Mercedes the parrot. Uh, this here, moving the chorus fruit as well. Still want to have it but functions a little bit better there than being stacked up behind this. Also, my jungle tree, which I built because the first one got burnt, um, has been moved uh, from actually right about here to out here. Took on the wood and then built the leaves on top of it. Uh, a little bit of redesign with the flowers in the front yard as well. And uh, this here area used to have a stable in it, which has been moved now two back here I um, redesigned a lot of this area I built the stable back here moving the uh, other things that were here which was oh my god that you glitched uh, moving the things that were back here which was just a house basically that had the ender dragon header on the first time we beat it which is now inside the regular house tore that down replicated the exact uh, stable back here. Also a little area where they can go walk onto the grass. And uh, yeah. As for the structure itself, well, let's head up this tower and take a look. It's a very better place to look from. As you can tell, that just fucked up. God damn it. As you can tell, it's a massive uh, house, and well, let's just take a look at it. Now, I do want to also say that not only did I build this house once, but I built it twice. A majority of the inside of this house, the floor and the ceiling here, which is the second level, caught on fire the other day, right about here. Caught on fire. By the time I was able to rescue my animals, which is why they are in the other structure over there. Because I just, I can't. It's the second time I've had to move my animals out of this house because of fire. I'm done. I'm leaving them in the other building. Um, rocks more fireproof than wood. I decided ultimately to just, you know, go and um, leave the animals there. So I had to rebuild this entire floor. Basically this section got burnt out pretty well. Upstairs got it even worse, had to rebuild a bunch of the stuff. But we're here. Also, the reason why that battle block didn't get finished was because we were putting out this fire, and then Lamim died near the battle block, came over here to help me put out the fire, and then some of his items disappeared that he couldn't find when he died on the scaffolding, so he had to re-enchant them. So we didn't get to do what we want to do today. 
Uh, but we are here. And we're going to take a look at this area. So, can you come in? Same front door as before. Same front entrance way. And you walk in. And over here, very, very similar to what we had before. Just push back a little bit. Rocks. You've got your smokers. Blast furnace, furnace. And then I do have a crafting table, which is different here. we got a little side door, which makes it easier to walk in between these two towers. Or tower and house. Uh, you come in over here, nothing in this chest anymore. Very close to our garden, though, which has potatoes. This machine, for when I go harvesting potatoes, throw them all into the hopper, put them here in the smoker, drop them ultimately into this chest. And then we got the other food items here. This here is a chest of things that Lamim may gather up just himself and he can drop them in here if he doesn't want it. A little bit different from the mailbox just because the mailbox is more items that he wants me to have, where this is just things he doesn't care about. If I don't want it, I'll throw it into here, which is a great segue into our same exact garbage disposal with the lava down there, which is completely covered in, so that would not have been what started the fire. That's completely covered in, encased. No way for the wood to catch on fire. Because if it wasn't fully encased, no way to catch the wood on fire, we would continue to be having fires in the same spot. But as you can see, it's wood and then a layer of dirt down there, so nothing to cause that. Uh, over here, I've moved some of the enchanting things. we got all of our books in the anvil, which used to be in about this area. I always have this here with some uh, flowers on it. Our dirt area there. Book over here, nothing written in it. Flowers, wool, bunch of other things, another crafting table. Basically, you know, your extra, extra tables. This here, the dragon head on the obsidian with our sign saying that we both killed it on September 11th, 2019. Got our armor stand, which got moved a little bit. Also, we changed the character a little bit instead of being a smaller hallway. It's just a big, massive open area. Uh, this here leads to... What a fucking mess. Oh my god. I looked at this map and really thought, that's confusing as hell, but I thought that was a mess, and I'm like, wait, that's just the same way it's supposed to be. Why the hell are there a couple blocks missing from this building? Oh my god. This here is my dank tower. which has now been ruined. It's supposed to be a lookout point though. Go up a little bit higher, but go up a lot higher, but it's been burned or ruined. Just like every fucking other thing that I build in this game because I have suspicions. So to fix that, I have to fix this. So now we go upstairs, and we got the chest here, normal, just rare material or rare items, wood, smoker just to have there. Chest, this is our random stuff chest, which is where you put things that I don't really care about. This here's extra tools, so this is where you might find Lamim, for example. Uh, this here is just a bunch of other random things again. Actually, this is the same display layout as it was in the other part of the house. This here section has not changed. Uh, here is a chest where maybe if I'm just like doing something, I can drop my bow and my trident if I feel like. Oh my god, are 
you fucking serious? Can this shit just go back to a normal fucking spot? Can we go, like, left to right, maybe? Instead of fucking right first. Either way, that's where I can keep some extra things. Because here's all my tools and stuff that I want specifically. I told the meme, this is my stuff. He can kind of take out of the other chest a little bit if he wants, but these here, this is mine. Don't touch it, bro. Um, yeah. Also got a block with a cake. Just got thought, oh, it looked cool to have a cake here. Then this here leads to my bedroom where we did have cats, but I moved them because, again, I was worried about having to move them in case another fire ripped through the area. Got another map just because that's cool sort of have to look at. Got our note block, jukebox, and then we lead out here. We can get a great view of the ranch and our tower. Awesome little area to have here. And then over here, another little lookout. And a spot there with the blocks, uh, very similar to what Lamim has for his door. Same blocks there, they're gonna get uh, lit with the sunlight detectors. A couple stairways up, one over there. And here are the new ones. We also have this in here by the door to replicate the original building. Out here, is where the old bedroom was, which is now a room for enchanting. When I sort of rebuilt the house and made a new bedroom, this room sort of got abandoned, but then became an enchanting room. Fun fact, also the only room in the house to not have been affected by fire. We head down here, exit from before, 